Thank you very much for that, Deb. Uh, interesting chat. We've been looking at the future over here because from a house to a human heart, you can create pretty much anything on a 3D printer these days. And I do mean pretty much anything. Earlier today, we set up a printer and got underway printing some of um, these little Mother's Day gifts. They'll all become clear in a moment. But joining us to tell us more about the art of 3D printing is social researcher Michael McQueen and PhD candidate Sam Canning. A couple of bright blokes. And uh, Michael, it does seem there's so many more things that you can make on a printer than anyone would have imagined. It, it's limitless. That's it. I mean, that, the area I work in is sort of forecasting trends. And I've kept an eye on 3D printing for a few years. But just in the last 18 months, it's just sort of gone from pie in the sky stuff to a genuine reality. And some of the things you can print, I mean, to give you an idea, you've got a, a toy truck here. Yeah. Let's print it in one piece. You've got you know, ceramic mugs, which are a phenomenal thing. I mean, print it again in one piece. But I was talking with a colleague. You can print in ceramics. You can print in ceramics. You can print in this and sort of resin material. it's just as good as a baked ceramic. Absolutely. Now, I was speaking with a colleague this week who um, was helping her son move out of his, his rental property. Yeah. And they broke on one of the ventilation grills in the fridge. So she measured it up and reprinted another ventilation grill so he didn't lose his bond. So the, the, the possibilities are our endless. This is going to stuff. affect a lot of industries and retail Absolutely, yeah. outlets, isn't it? It's a disruptive technology, I That's think. Right. They call it. Sam, how does it work? Um, there are a few main technologies, but basically they all work in the same way. They build apart, um, it, collectively they're called additive manufacturing, and they build apart by depositing layers of material rather than tradi traditional manufacturing, which tends to be either reductive in nature. Okay, mm. so you're making a, a black and white necklace over here that we'll yes. get to in a moment. But I can't get my head around this, because this is three-dimensional, and it's so intricate, it's interwoven, and if you're depositing things layer by layer by layer by layer, I can't see how that you don't cut across all the strands that are in here. Yes, um, this, this, is a, this is a slightly different technology to the, the, these small machines here. This is called um, selective laser sintering and it, and it works by depositing a layer of powder, fusing that powder, that powder together with a laser and then when the model is um, finished all of the unfused powder is basically shaken out. So what it, uh, what the real, one of the real pluses of this technology is the this kind of geometry is almost um, is always almost endless. And we're, we're seeing surgical friendly materials used too. Uh, body parts are being replaced. Uh, you know, valves and um, veins and arteries and things like that. Um, if if you could do this in metal, you could start to make nearly perfect like engine blocks and things like that. Yeah, that's right. Um, the the there is a the titanium is a is a metal that. 3D prints really well. It uses a very similar technology to this um, selective laser sintering. It's called selective laser melting. Um, in the news a few months ago, NASA printed rocket nozzles that were used hmm. that have been used. So it's um, yeah, there's, there's a, the applications for metal technology. It's going to change the world, Michael. Yeah, in manufacturing, it's interesting to see how this is having an impact. So last week, I don't know if you saw the news that a property development company in China boasted they'd built they'd, they'd printed 10 houses in 24 hours. Incredible. And the next feat is to print a skyscraper, as the Chinese do. You know, but it's interesting. You see, even in a domestic market here, I was speaking with a guy this week who um, works at a, a for a manufacturer of hearing aid devices and they're actually using 3D printers to make the plastic moulds and whereas they could make 20 by hand they can print 70 at a time now using these printers and they're far more accurate. Oh, well look it's going to revolutionise everything we, we, we've got to go now, got to go to a break but um, can you finish the necklace for me and show me Absolutely. how it all prints out? We'll make a Mother's Day present so we'll come back and see that very shortly but uh, Deb what's coming up? A little bit of puppy love I imagine. Yeah.